Hi everyone, Mr. Mai here. So this is part two of my series of videos showing how to prepare a lesson that uses Kami. We're pretty much creating a chart for me to use with kindergarten students teaching the text features of nonfiction text. So if you, in the previous video, I showed how to take screenshots of pictures. In this video, I'm gonna show how to add those pictures to a document in Kami. And then in the last video, I'm gonna show how to use it in a recorded lesson. So our goals in this session is, I'm gonna show you how to create the chart using Kami, how to add in the pictures, and how to block those images out with the shape tool so that you can use so that you can use one chart and show things at specific points in your lesson. So it's one chart to use over the whole week and the kids are going to see one thing a day. Now just as a reminder, this is something that I'm showing with Cami, but you could also do this with Google Slides, Google Drawings, Office PowerPoint if you're using like Zoom or Google Meet or some other screen recorder. Um, or Seesaw. It may work on other platforms, but these are the platforms that I'm familiar with. Going step by step, first you would need to go to Cami's website and you would need to sign in. Now I'm using Google, so as soon as I click sign in, it logs me in. If you've never gone to Cami, then you just do sign in, put in your Google information, and then grant the approvals, and then it'll let you in. Okay, so I'm doing this as a complete blank. If you have something in your Google Drive that you want to do this with already, you can open it from Google Drive. So this is, I'm cold turkey, completely blank, you know, coming up with this on my own. So I'm going to open up a complete blank page. It's going to save it to my drive because I have it set to do that by default. And I'm going to label this uh, nonfiction. I'm going to put nonfiction text features. That's the bulk of this lesson. Okay. Now, the easy part is just putting the pictures in. Uh, there's two ways to do it. You can, the time consuming way is click on insert image, select my computer, because I'm assuming that you are either using pictures that are you took with screenshot, and then you're just going to find the pictures. So I'm just going to grab this picture. And I'm just going to move something out of the way, click open, and then here's the picture. I got to decide where to drop it. So this is something I'm doing towards the end, so I'm going to put it on the bottom. Now, don't worry. You can move it around anywhere you want, even after you place it, so don't panic, okay? So you do have the option in Kami that you can open from your computer. You can open stuff from your drive. You could also open stuff from Google Search, like you just type in something and put that picture in there. I did screenshots and it's on my desktop. I love my Mac. I can just drag it over and drop it. So the kids had already done this part about being avid readers. So I'm just going to make this bigger. So I'm going to use that to remind them that's, that's what they've already done. And then the new stuff that they're going to learn is, and I'm just dragging and dropping this over. So this is going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the title and the pictures with that post. And then I was going to do another day, I'm going to do what a table of contents is. And let me just move this over. And the headings. So this is the headings from that same book. A little blurry, but the focus is on the heading, not the text there. So I'm just gonna shrink this to make it all fit. So I have table contents, I have headings. And then let's see here. After that, I'm going to do, I'm just gonna make sure. I was going to do diagrams and labels. So I need my picture of the diagram. And again, these are all screenshots that I took from books that I have. You could also take screenshots of things like from Epic or Raz Kids, if you find good examples with that. And then the other one is going to be like bold words and glossary. So I'm grouping them together 
based on what kind of makes the most sense. So then I put the picture here. Now I have the option that I could go in and put in the title of e for each picture to remind me of the teaching points, but I want this to be interactive because I'm gonna do like one or two a day and I wanna keep the other ones covered up. And something I learned with Cami is I can't put a shape over a text box, but I can put it over a picture. Go figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these first with the shape boxes. And then during the lesson, I will remove the shape box and then do my drawing or and or typing in the box. OK, so I'm, what you're going to do is you first got to pick your shape. Make sure that when you go to pick your shape, obviously, you're probably going to pick the square. It's up to you if you want to do a color, it would help you find the boxes easier if you did do a color. And then you need to click on the number one, and then you need to say fill. If you don't do that, you're just gonna get a box. So in this case, an orange box with nothing filled in that defeats the purpose of doing this. But if you see here, it's filled in. So the whole box appears filled in. Now, the next teaching point is going to be these two together. So just to help me remember that, I will put these in the same color. I kind of do the same thing in real life with the charts in my classroom. The, I try and kind of coordinate which ones. Oops. This little icon on the box is in the way. Let me go down. I'm going to switch to select to fix this box because otherwise it would have just created a whole new box and I don't need a whole new box. All right, and then let me do a, another one to cover these two, but I'm gonna do the same shape. Uh, I would like green though, let's go with green. So I like green to match the other one that's there. So that was just, if you wanna switch colors, you click on more colors and then now it's here, I just have to select it. So it becomes my primary tool. Still got the box there, going to do that. And then we need to do one more for this one and the camera's in the way. I gotta move me. So let me move, me move this down. Here we go. And move it over just to here. There we go. All right, so now this is what the students would see when I first showed them this page. Let me shrink the camera a little bit out of the way. In this video, we learned how to create a chart using Kami. We learned how to add in the pictures and how to block the images with the shapes tool so that we can show the pictures when we're ready to do it during the lesson so they don't see the whole chart at once. And just a reminder that this can be used, this is to be used in Kami in this video, but you could adapt this for Google Slide, Google Drawing, Office PowerPoint, or Seesaw. In the next video, I'm going to model using what I created with the document camera and a book. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you need additional help, check out my YouTube playlist and or the videos I have posted. I am frequently putting up new ones as people ask for help and uh, and explore other ways of going with this distant learning. You can also follow me at TechMot on Twitter, and I will post little updates on things that I post or things that I find as well. Okay, good luck.